Yes, and welcome back. This is the Touchline. I'm Bernardo Kumu, and to our second uh, interview, where we're talking to Lydia Kaparo, former Kenyan international, stand out for the national women's cricket team between 2010 and 2015. Also played uh, hockey for the women's uh, side sliders, and also uh, does sometimes attempted to run but all the same she is now wearing a different hat but still in cricket she is an umpire welcome Alidia Caparo thank you very to much to our sir. show thank today you. and of course we basically have to begin with your playing career uh, uh, that's uh, cricket how did you pick up cricket <laughs> funny um, anyway I've been into sports uh, uh, when I was in high school and I really enjoyed uh, being on the field. Um, I met a friend of mine who I went to school with who had started playing cricket. And uh, one day I was going for my hockey training and she told me, divert from your hockey training, come to, to the cricket and see if you would like it. So mm -hmm. that's how I went on a Friday. Mm -hmm. I was given a ball mm -hmm. uh, and I started my journey there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you, 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 that's how you began. But who are the key people who maybe who encouraged you and held your hand as you learned the sport that you, had nev you, you, you just came in touch with at that moment? Okay, so um, Ruth Mihaki was uh, the former player mm -hmm. who uh, is the one who brought me there. And then I met the likes of uh, late Emily Ruto, mm -hmm. who's one of my friends. And then uh, Dan Okinyo, who mm -hmm. actually was the one who introduced me to the sport. So I, I thank him for that because otherwise if it was not for him, then I wouldn't have stayed back. So he was the one who taught me what to do. And then from there, I just kicked it off. Yeah. Y yes. And at that time, he was hand Dan was handling the national uh, yeah. women's team, right? Yeah. So you went straight into the national women's team. Lucky you are, right? Yeah. I was lucky to meet them, actually. I started training them. I, I thought it was going to be hard mm -hmm. uh, because you, you... I mean, I met people who played uh, since they were like little children. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I'm an adult and I'm, I'm trying out a new sport which I've never played. Mm -hmm. But it was easy for me because mm -hmm. I, I, I've been a sports person. Mm -hmm. I've played sports before, so it was mm -hmm. very easy. Mm -hmm. It was like a smooth uh, sailing to mm -hmm. me. So I just got the basics and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's and, it. and so you got into the now. How easy was it for you? What else did you have to do before breaking into maybe earning your first cups, first matches? Yeah. Uh, so for me to learn about cricket, mm -hmm. I used to come and uh, train with them. Mm -hmm. But during the league matches, mm -hmm. I would sit down. Uh, I was taught how to score. Mm -hmm. So from scoring, mm -hmm. I was able to understand the game better and be able to play. So I started ju by just playing mm -hmm. in the ladies' league, mm -hmm. and uh, from there. I kept on training and uh, I found myself uh, being called to come and train with them now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like the main team, and mm -hmm. that's how I got mm -hmm. uh, to play for Kenya. What did that mean, your position that you played? Um, I liked bowling. Mm -hmm. um, I started as a lower, uh, lower uh, batter, mm -hmm. like in the, bat the mm -hmm. batting order used to come down. Mm -hmm. But eventually I got the correct um, basics and I was able to come up. Uh, I was opening at some point the late Ruto mm -hmm. and a former captain, Ma uh, Margaret Banja. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed it and I was an all-rounder. Mm -hmm. um, I, l I enjoyed everything, being on the field as a fielder, uh, bowling and batting. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the whole mm -hmm. um, concept in of cricket. Yeah. Y yeah. Your, uh, your brightest moment as, as, as a national team member? Mm -hmm. uh, the couple. Mm -hmm. uh, but I remember... Um, uh, one day when I, I made my debut in uh, Uganda and I came in number nine mm -hmm. and I almost scored the, the most runs for the team. We, we, the team didn't uh, bat very well, but mm -hmm. I came in last. Uh, number nine, that's the lower batter, mm -hmm. uh, batting order. And um, I mean, I was able to score decent runs. And then uh, the next match I was, I, was, I was challenged to come in and open. So I think that was a... A big thing playing amongst people who've been there for uh, years, and I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I went for it, and uh, from then I got the confidence to keep going. And yeah, that's how I, 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 I said, and I told myself, if you want something, you can always get it, and you can do whatever it is that you think you can't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was, um, I mean, uh, did you expect it to turn out that way? No, that was a surprise. Mm -hmm. I was actually enjoying. Uh, myself, I said, if I'm given a chance mm -hmm. uh, in the first 11, I'll just go do my best and enjoy what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so that gave me an opportunity to come up the order. And I, I, I had my position in the team mm -hmm. because of the performance that I had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, when you have your when you have your position because of performance, how how does how does it make you feel? Like you know, how, where where else do you go? I mean. 
It's, it's a challenging question. Uh, sometimes in sports you don't know. Um, you, you will wake up sometimes and you're not performing and then there's a day you will wake up and you're not performing. You, you lose form sometimes and uh, there's a time you're going to be on form. So it's, it's hard to predict, but I mean training and uh, you just keep doing what you, you're asked to do or whatever you need to do mm -hmm. and it will, it will help you get uh, to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was there any low moment? Mm, yes, when I was joining, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know. <laughs> First match I was put, I came, on a, I came to training on a Friday evening mm -hmm. and they put me to play on a match on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you have, we had to catch s a ball to get somebody out. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way I thought somebody would be run out is to throw the ball, uh, the ball from the fielder mm -hmm. to the wicket keeper. I mm -hmm. didn't know you, you can throw to the mm -hmm. bowler's end. So everybody could scream at me. Mm -hmm. Everybody was screaming. So and I'm just like, I'm so confused. I don't mm -hmm. know the sport. Mm -hmm. And every, everybody thinks simply because you, you're a sports person, you mm -hmm. would understand that mm -hmm. sport. So mm -hmm. it was and <laughs> one you're time. And, cricket I, field. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I was thinking, uh, do I want to be here? Or is it a nice sport to play? So <laughs> I was totally confused. But anyway, it didn't dim my lights mm -hmm. um, to continue playing the sport. Mm -hmm. So I continued mm -hmm. and uh, I got to where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe a coach came and gave you a word told you not to worry <laughs> yeah he had to i remember coach dan <laughs> had to step in and just like oh, she's never played you guys need to come down and just support her and uh, let her understand teach her what she needs to learn and mm -hmm. that's it so that was one of my lowest moments in, in the game but mm -hmm. yeah i've loved it since then yeah and you also uh, belong to a team that um i call it a pioneer women's team cricket team that uh, really uh, went on to bring Kenya, I'll say, glory, you know, did so well. Among them was uh, the late Emily. Talk about her influence in the team at that I time. I mean, um, may God continue resting her soul in peace. Um, uh, Emily, I remember her, she was one of my best friends when I joined in. She was one of the people who actually made me stay and play the game because I remember <laughs> I used to lie one time <laughs> and I would say to her, I don't have transport to go to to training. I just didn't want to go because I mean I was just like ah, it's too hard. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to make it where where they were. So I remember she would drive her car, she would come to my house, she would pick me up and and drop me to the field. And she did that for a whole week and told me it's not fair that you don't have. Uh -huh. You just don't want to come. So I have to bring you. And she made it a habit to come pick me up from the house and drop me. So she's one of the people who actually uh, held my hand. Uh -huh and made me stay and I'm forever indebted to her and um, yeah I mean she was one of the best players best spinners I think we've ever had in in Africa mm -hmm. and um, she used to play with the men so she was a phenomenal player mm -hmm. and I, I think she inspired so many people so many girls who, who were coming up so I think um, I mean if she was still here with us, I think she would have influenced a lot of players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, and uh, maybe the uh, moments that the team did um, again along the road is winning Kibuka. Yeah. How, how crucial was the, were the titles for, especially to gain to help the game gain the popularity and also the support from uh, key stakeholders. I mean, that was a, that was an amazing moment. Um, in Kenya, we actually have um, we have talent. Mm -hmm. Uh, even the current team that we're having, it's just a young team, but um, I mean, there's talent. Mm -hmm. uh, there was talent and there's always has been talent. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that Kwebuka tournament, uh, it's, it's every year is getting uh, more, more competitive. More competitive yeah. mm -hmm. And we are getting uh, teams like Rwanda, mm -hmm. which were surprised in the, surprised the whole um, East Africa in uh, last year, that mm -hmm. is in 2023. Mm -hmm. um, they've always been, you know, we, we looked at them like uh, teams which uh, have been participating in, in tournaments, but mm -hmm. the last year... Not contenders. The, yes. Mm -hmm. So last year mm -hmm. was a surprise. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, nobody expected they would do what Their cricket has grown massively. Th there's so much talent. Uh, these girls and are A playing. lot of investment as well. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. There's a lot of investment. And uh, even making it to that national team, mm -hmm. you have to... They, they have like structures. They have under 15, under 17, and 18, which is amazing to watch. And... Um, I remember I was doing the umpiring mm -hmm. during that tournament and it was it was amazing. It was just amazing to watch these girls. But yes, as I said, uh, last time when we, we won the Kwibuka, it was um, it was an amazing outing for the girls mm -hmm. and uh, they give their all. Mm -hmm. And I keep on saying, we Kenyans have, we have the talent. We've always had the talent. Mm -hmm. It's just that we need more 
um, time to play and mm -hmm. we need more fixtures. Mm -hmm. We need to go play uh, against more competitive High teams. High level matches. Yes, mm -hmm. so that we can improve. Uh, otherwise, if you don't have like a league which is running mm -hmm. and um, you don't have, uh, you don't get to play against competitive games, it's going to be very hard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and of course you transition, you just turned up for the national, you were the national colors for only for uh, five years and then you went into um, management of uh, sports. But talk about your role here, which the hat that you're wearing, uh, that's the umpiring, you know. How, what motivated you to get into cricket umpiring? Uh, so, I've always loved it. I've been a scorer mm -hmm. and uh, one day I just sat during the under-19 qualifiers that we hosted here mm -hmm. and um, I had um, a chat with one of the uh, match ref and I said to him, I mean I would love to um, umpire one day and not be on this end of scoring and um, I mean I've always loved it and I said one day I will want to do it. So uh, my last tour as a team manager uh, I met this umpire who was uh, making her debut. She's called Lauren Agenberg from South Africa. I had a chat with her and uh, and she said to me, I mean, for how long would you like to be a team manager? Mm -hmm. Would you not want to step in and do uh, something which is different from just managing the team? And I said to her, I'll, I'll think about it. So I kept in touch with her and as soon as I got home, um, I spoke to the chairman of the um, umpiring association and I said um, I, I, would, I would really love to step in, mm -hmm. I would really love to start umpiring mm -hmm. and since I played the game, mm -hmm. I have been a scorer, mm -hmm. it's easy for me to, to step in and, and start doing whatever it is that they are doing and they gave me a chance, they told me if you would like to do it, they gave me a match, I remember they gave me a 50 over match uh, in the men's team division one and I said that's the um, division which is lower the Super League um, after the Super League. So I said, why not? So I went and I, it was hard the first time because uh, the men see you and they're just like, a lady cannot umpire. And then when you make decisions, everybody's screaming on your ear. Mm -hmm. and, but I didn't, I didn't let that. Um, and and, that's, and uh, that's allowed also in cricket, right? It is allowed. It, yeah. What are the terms that they use? Sledging, you will be sledging. <laughs> but but how they do it, it's like they they, they intimidate you, mm -hmm. so that you can they squeeze you to a corner. Mm -hmm. They want you to make a decision. Uh, favoring them. Yes. Uh -huh. So I mean, sometimes it is they want to see, and it's it's allowed because um, I mean nobody stops a player from wanting to appeal for something even yeah. when they think it's not out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's allowed, and uh, it's just about how you stand your ground and uh -huh. make your own decisions. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, and and now uh, the. The, um, I remember your biggest moment was umpiring in Kwibuka and also the series that was here which was uh, between Kenya and Nepal. You know, how, how important were those high caliber uh, matches that you officiated and how they gave you the belief to go on? I mean, <laughs> um, <laughs> umpiring an international match is, is, is not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. um, you get uh, cameras all over. Mm -hmm. Everybody is watching every mm -hmm. single step that you're mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was um, and I thank Rwanda. I keep on saying Rwanda gave me the platform mm -hmm. to start my international um, umpiring. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was lovely. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a bit scary when you start, mm -hmm. but when you continue doing it, I mean, it, it, it isn't up. Um, your feelings of how you, you know, umpire. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I loved it. I loved it from the word go. And it gave me the confidence to carry on. And then when Nepal came here, mm -hmm. I know I was the only lady, mm -hmm. which was, it was, a, it was a great opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the Nepal team met me for the first time and they were just like, oh, they thought I was a scorer. Nobody mm -hmm. believed like you. I was sitting, having a meeting. Uh -huh. And uh, nobody believed like you're part of the umpire in Until you put and on I the had, uniform. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I had to keep explaining. They keep on asking, so what are you doing in this tournament? So what are you doing in this tournament? So I mean, it was a big moment uh, introducing myself in front of such a big country called Nepal and how th where they are right now in uh -huh. their ranking. Uh -huh. It was an amazing thing. And it was men. Uh -huh. So it was a men's team. So I mean, it's, it's, that's a, it's a very big challenge. But I, I really enjoyed it. And I think it pushed me to... Uh, doing whatever it is that I love doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, um, you could be just coming in as the second ever Kenyan uh, woman umpire, but you can talk about how 
um, Jackie Jan Mohammed, the former Cricket Kenya Association chair, was influential and how she helped you. And she, of course, she trailblazed that particular uh, trail, you know, becoming, she was the first and now she did really, how did, what role did she play in encouraging you to take up that particular, uh, to go that road? Uh, I mean, uh, I appreciate her uh -huh. uh, because when, when I was transitioning from, it got to a point I couldn't, I could, I could not play because of work commitments. Um, I had to go for training very early in the morning and I had to go to work again early in the morning. So like uh, I would come training from 6 to um, around 8.30 mm -hmm. and then I would need to go start work at 9 o'clock. So it was very hard, hard for me to commute mm -hmm. uh, from my training uh, ground to my, my school. Mm -hmm. So I would miss practice uh, here and there every day. And it was hard, so I had given up at some point, but I don't know how she found me. She just looked for me, and she called me one day, and she told me, um, how come you're not, I've been told you're not coming for training. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's, it's hard for me to, to commit to training because of work commitment. Mm -hmm. And that's when she, she, she suggested, if I would love, because uh, even when I was a player, I was still helping her uh, with a lot of admin work. Mm -hmm. And uh, she asked me, would you like to, take um, this position and be a team. So she spoke me into it and I said, yeah, I would love to do it. It's, it's a leadership because she saw some leadership skills in me and she told me she wants to hold my hand and I can step in and do that. So it was an amazing journey. It helped me. Uh, mm -hmm. I've grown since. Mm -hmm. I was able managing a whole national team mm -hmm. and women, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. an easy thing. Mm -hmm. But I loved it. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, I mean, um, we spoke about umpiring. So mm -hmm. every time I would have a coffee, mm -hmm. um, maybe date with her, she mm -hmm. would speak to me and uh, maybe encourage me to keep doing whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought it was going to be hard, mm -hmm. but until you get in there, mm -hmm. it's, it's not hard mm -hmm. until it's hard. And what are some of the qualities that those who are aspiring to step into that world, they need to do? I mean, <laughs> number one, um, as an umpire, keep time. I keep on saying you have to be, you have to keep time. Uh -huh. Be aware of mm -hmm. uh, the timing that you need to be at the ground. Mm -hmm. And then um, th how, how you present yourself mm -hmm. in front of people. Mm -hmm. um, don't be intimidated. Mm -hmm. uh, if you make a decision, stick mm -hmm. to your decision. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody uh, let your guard down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you just need to, timings, I, I, I mind about time timekeeping, um, how you present yourself in front of people, mm -hmm. and uh, clear decision making. Yes. Yeah. So what's the, maybe before we wind up, what's the forthcoming assignment for you, 2024? Um, well, we had um, a tournament which was cancelled in December because of the, um, uh, the tournament which just co concluded uh, in Uganda, the mm -hmm. qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we're going to have another quadrangular. We're hoping it's going to be soon. Mm -hmm. But uh, the upcoming uh, African, all African games which are happening in Ghana, mm -hmm. um, I will not be part of it because um, I'm, I'm, I'll be leaving for UK mm -hmm. for some netball mm -hmm. tournament, so I won't be part of them. Mm -hmm. But um, my um, next assignment, I'm mm -hmm. hoping Kwibuka mm -hmm. or if the mm -hmm. uh, Kenya quadrangular mm -hmm. tournament happens, maybe we'll stop mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And of course, going to UK as a, a school a school sports teacher, right? No, Kenyan netball, one Kenyan, of the coaches. Oh, oh. So there's a Kenyan netball tour. Mm -hmm. uh, so they pick mm -hmm. children from all international schools, uh -huh. and then they make a Kenyan team. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I was selected as one of the coaches. So Yeah, and yeah. you also at sports teachers here. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much, uh, Lydia Caparo. And maybe before I let you go, what's your comment on Quinta Abel uh, being a, uh, clinching the ICC Associate Player of the Player of the Year Award? I mean, I mean that's an amazing achievement, mm -hmm. and congratulations. Uh, I, I sent her text, um, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, it's not an easy thing mm -hmm. for you to get where you are. Mm -hmm. You've worked hard, you've mm -hmm. done your best. Keep mm -hmm. at it. I mean, everybody has a goal that they want mm -hmm. to achieve. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you want to achieve, mm -hmm. you will achieve if you work hard. Yeah, thank you so much, Lydia Caparo, the cricket umpire who's been speaking to Touchline. And we wish you all the best. Up next, we'll be talking about AFCON with the Barrio Bell. Keep watching Touchline on Y254. Nearly Yamasa.